We've got ourselves a new compact out of the Czech Republic. It's got a CZ barrel, a regulator, a 300 bar fill, reversible side lever cocking, an externally adjustable hammer spring adjuster, and it's a folder coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Seven hundred is to bolt on a hundred and fifty. Press this. I feel like I could do a one-handed, and I could still. Uh, as always, Operation Manager for Hot Side. Log already. I've done a full tuning guide on this on my eighty ten. Granted, we're talking a twenty-five yard cut. <laughs> the Air Max Catron Compact Twenty Two CB B for bottle comes to us from the Czech Republic, and this one came to me for testing by way of Utah Air Guns. The Catron is the industry's only reversible side lever cocking CZ barreled 300 bar regulated folder. What that means to you is premium componentry aboard a 20 inch travel sized air gun. Extended, the compact is ready to go at just 30 inches, and weighs a feathery 5 pounds 7 ounces pre-rigging. However, there are full size versions available. The standard Catron measures 36 inches long, and the long measures 40.5, and the XHP extends your pleasure to a frontier size Davy Crockett Slug Special of 48 inches. Barrel lengths span 280 millimeters, 400 millimeters, 520 millimeters, and 700 millimeters respectively, and all four models sport a 1 in 17.7 twist. All are choked except for the 700. Air on tap runs the gamut from 165cc alloy tubes on all the way up to 500cc carbon fiber bottles, with our compact CB here utilizing a 300cc mini carbon fiber. Available calibers across the lineup are 177, 22, and 25, and prices span $1,200 to $1,450. And as you're about to see, this makes the Catron comparatively a good value in high-end air gun land. Decked out and shoot ready, my Catron Compact weighed 8 pounds 15 ounces to include a scope, mounts, bipod, moderator, and bottle full of air, but just 7 pounds 6 ounces scoped and field carry ready. The Compact's valving works hard to hold the 25 foot pound line with its little 280 millimeter barrel, but it manages with good efficiency. Detuned slightly with its external hammer spring adjuster, I suspect shot count would move into the territory of great. Out of the box, a 300 bar fill yielded 45 regulated shots at 25.4 foot-pounds with an 18 grain, 47 shots at 24.4 foot-pounds with a 16 grain, and 43 shots at 23.6 foot-pounds with a 14 grain. The party ended fairly abruptly each time when the gun fell off the regulator at around 115 bar. Extreme spreads and standard deviations were again good, but not great but they were certainly tight enough to make things work and work well in real world 50 and 100 yard testing. Audibly and in some cases visually, waste air emerging around the pellet was a little more than I'd like to see. Once again, a slight detune to 21 to 23 foot pounds should remedy this. As is, the 14 grain is pushed to an average of 860 feet per second, the 16 grain to 832, and the 18 grain to 794. Power and accuracy aside, the Catron's build quality, refinement of operation, and packaging are what make it really stand out among pricey airgun warlords. All Catrons take advantage of a fluted and baffled shroud with one half inch UNF threads at the business end to affix your favorite moderator. A hard to get and highly desired CZ barrel, a 115 bar regulator, a Picatinny scope rail with 20 MOA built in, a key mod forend with magnetic stock holder, a carbon fiber bottle option, a quick disconnect fill probe, reversible side lever cocking and reversible AR style safety, a 16 round magazine in 22 cal, a foldable stock with heavy duty alloy joint, an adjustable cheek piece, an adjustable length of pull, a height adjustable rubber butt pad, dual onboard magazine holders, an externally adjustable hammer spring screw, and an adjustable dual stage match trigger with perfect manners. 
Oh yeah, you get an Air Max travel hard case too. The adjustable monopod and bag rider you see on mine is an optional $50 Air Max accessory. And a no-brainer. So, is the Air Max Catron Compact right for you? The Catron's overall excellence really surprised me and I found myself putting in a lot of extra time really getting to know it. It was a combination of quality, looks, feel, and overall packaging and price that really did it for me. It's almost as if I built the dang thing in a computer giving me almost everything that I wanted. And all of this goodness has come out of a relatively new air gun company, which normally would scare me a little, but in this case it doesn't. Air Max Arms has roots in air gun technologies and in Ataman, which is a politically correct way of saying that some of the people there came from these other great organizations. And I must say, I'm in. I'm in 100% and I'm really excited to see what they do going forward. Because plainly put, their out of the gate guns are next level for the money. And I think a lot of people are really going to like them once they realize what they're getting for their dollar. Hunters and pesters love little, and a 20 inch folder is the king of little. And this one is tiny from every angle, and looks and feels good too. And onboard backup dual mag storage to load up could not be more clairvoyant. But you gotta go a little bit slow on the cycling on account of the magazine's light spring rate. As you see me do here is just fine, but not much faster. Cycling to the rear is light, precise, and is satisfyingly clicky. And going forward is equally so, but you're gonna feel that pellet riding through the breech o-ring, which I find reassuring and kinda like. What wasn't my favorite is the light spring rate inside the magazine. And while it probably contributes to important things like accuracy and ease of loading the magazine, it did get on my nerves a few times. But once you learn how to handle it outside the gun, it's not a big deal. But until you do, you're probably going to be dropping random pellets as I was. So when you're handling it, keep your fingers off of the parts of it that move. And you'll be just fine. The compact is a field gun, no doubt, but it can be surprisingly good from the bipod as well, adding a whole nother level of versatility to this short range woods walker. It pulls it off via a super rigid folding joint and wonderfully rigid framing. And it's $50 accessory adjustable monopod and bag rider bring it all together, with its adjustable length of pull, comb, and buttstock being icing on the cake. But it's not perfect. The rubber butt pad's foundation is poly, and this happens to be a critical joint playing a major role in long range accuracy. And to be fair to the overall design, much more so on the bipod than in the hands. But for those times that you are on the bipod and monopod, the whole rig is quite sensitive to vertical loading, and it will flex at this point, easily inducing some wild vertical stringing into your target. Now with all that being said, the accessory monopod and bag rider were a difference maker for me to the positive. In other words, once I figured out how to go gentle on it, I actually became a much better shooter with this gun, and my groups really tightened up, in contrast to just shooting everything off of double bags. And hence, here we come full circle to this $50 accessory monopod and bag rider being a must-have for the Catron Compact. Because at some point in your ownership experience, you will find yourself culling for the right pellet, and or tuning your Catron for maximum performance with that pellet. All right, let me just get me my big chunky legs wrapped around all this fancy camera gear. So guys, going forward on the channel, you're probably gonna see me using this new Easy Fill most all the time. It's basically just an air chuck for your air gun, no different than you'd have in the shop or the garage. And having spent three weeks with it now, I've come to the conclusion that it's basically a better system than what I've been using over the past decade. And since it was gifted to me by free by Brian Meckler of Edgun West, I'm basically going to use it until I either lose it or it breaks because I just like it more. So having put in the three weeks with it, um, there's probably three distinct advantages I can think of that'll be important to a lot of people and maybe one disadvantage. But what I like best about it is Wherever my fill source is, whether it's on the ground and I'm standing over it, whether it's in my backpack 
um, whether it's under my shooting table, whatever, I no longer have to reach over, around, under, what have you, and throttle the yoke on it to fill my air gun. Kind of along the same lines, when I'm done filling my air gun, I don't have to find that tank or reach or bend or whatever to purge the air between the fill source and the gun with the little bleed valve on the side of the, uh, the yoke over there. And also kind of a fringe benefit to that, because I'm not purging the air every time I fill the, the air in the line, every time I fill the gun, I no longer have that waste air. So, you know, for me, it's been better. Now, the only disadvantage I can think of is once you've pressurized this line and you basically walk around with it pressurized all the time, uh, you can no longer index the actual chuck because it's under too much force. Now, if you have a quick connect fill probe like this one here, you can index that certainly, but, um, but yeah, that may or may not be a problem for you. But um, to fill your gun, all you basically do is just squeeze the, the little throttle here, and it, and it does have some throttling ability, meaning if I squeeze it a little, it gives you a little air. If I squeeze it a lot, uh, it gives you a lot of air. It's kind of like an accelerator pedal. It just doesn't have that much resolution or, or bandwidth. Um, but here we go. This is all there, all there is to it. As we do this, you'll also notice that this is only a 300cc bottle, and the fill speed of this chuck isn't so much that it's going to superheat the air in here because, um, and, uh, and give you a pressure drop. So the fill speed at kind of the full throttle or the full squeezing of the little, the little uh, pad there isn't so much that, um, that it's going to be put you in an overspeed or an overfilling situation that I know a lot of you are concerned, concerned with. Coming up on 300 bar here. That's close enough with the pressure drop of when I filled up this SCBA tank and the outside temperature here, that's the most I'm going to get. But you saw that as soon as I let go of that, you heard it. It purged itself right here at the, right here at the source, and now I can just take it out. That's really the big advantage of this. So, yeah, that's all there is to filling your Air Max Cayman with the new Easy Fill by Edgun. I misspoke and said Cayman because I reviewed that one back in April. You can catch a full review of it here on this channel and a discovery and approach classroom style of vid over on my other YouTube channel, 8EAC Vlog. If you like what you see in the Catran so far, I've also got a second video of it over on my second channel. There's lots more to learn about it, much more so than you're seeing in this video that you're currently watching. Michael Went, the owner of the Airgun Nation Forum, got one too. The 165cc tube version. And his was custom Cerakoted, an additional service Utah Air Guns offers their customers. Anyway, we do a share and compare and deep dive on harmonics and pulse wave, moderator tuning, the 300 bar fill debate, overpowering and turbulence behind the pellet, this new easy fill, and much more. So if you like that kind of stuff, be sure to check it out. On the topic of moderator tuning, waste air behind the pellet, and turbulence around it, I put in a lot of time there too. Accuracy across a lot of pellets tested was the same at 50 yards with or without the accessory Dani FL moderator. But out of the Tatsu, Sumo, and Ronin, it definitely liked the Sumo most. And that's going to be specific to your chosen pellet and tune. So you'll have to do your own homework. Tuned to around 20 foot pounds, Michaels liked the Tatsu best, as well as the JSB 1435 Express and Hades, which this one refused to shoot well with its aggressive OEM tune. I applaud Air Max for trying to get to 25 foot-pounds with a 280 millimeter barrel. But to accomplish that is going to take a lot of air. And that a lot of air has got to come out around the pellet as it emerges from the barrel. And that has a tendency to destabilize them a bit as they leave the gun. Especially the lighter weight ones. Now while this is pretty much going to be a non-issue at 30 or 40 yards, at 50 it starts to make itself known. And you'll see it in the way of pellet corkscrew, wobble, or flash. And when you do see it, that's generally telling you to back off the power, back off the velocity, or go to a heavier pellet. Any of the three should work to settle things down for you. As is, my compact was coping pretty well. 
but if I were to own this gun, I'd be backing off those foot-pounds by two or three and going from there. It'd probably get along better with the 13 and 14 grain, and the Hades too. But before you get to messing with that external hammer spring adjuster or tuning with moderators, it's always best to first find the pellets that your barrel likes best. And from there, expect all those hard-won results to change on you as you get to fiddling. And to bring it all together, these last two shots are going to corkscrew on me. It takes a lot of air to wring 25 foot-pounds out of a little 280 millimeter barrel, making this baffled OEM shroud not up to the task of quieting down this little gun. By itself, it's really quite loud. Now Air Max of course knows this and to their credit, they went ahead and machined one half inch UNF threads into the end of their shroud, enabling you to add your moderator of choosing, like this Sumo here by Donny FL, which completely transforms the personality of this gun. As with the JSBRS and Express, I could tell that this CZ barrel wanted to like the Hades too. So despite them running a little bit hot for this setup, I went ahead and included them in the video. I suspect that detuned a little bit, this gun will run great with them too. On the topic of air gun tuning and AEAC tuning guides, I get a lot of questions in the comments asking me why I don't provide a tuning guide on every air gun that I host. And to be fully transparent, the answer is this. Tuning guides are a much larger investment in time on my end. And what that means to the sponsor is a larger invoice on theirs. So to be fair, it doesn't always make sense for them to invest. But if you do want your Catron tuned for a specific purpose, power, or load, Utah Air Guns does offer this service. When you buy your gun, just let them know what you want, and for an additional cost, they'll help you get there. They know what they're doing and are very good at it. For glass today, I'm shooting Hawks Air Max 30 WASF. The WA stands for wide angle in the SF side focus. Its AMX IR reticle is specifically designed for air guns with plenty of north-south mill dots. This will help you compensate for loopy trajectories, just like the ones you find in moderately powered air guns like our Catron Compact here as you reach out towards 100 yards. This Air Max's fixed 10x44 magnification worked great from about 25 feet and out. Inside of that, it was blurry. As to the advantages of fixed magnification, for me their scopes tend to be simpler, lighter, and shorter. Others may tell you different. And I liked everything about this one except its mushy clicks. But I don't think it was designed to be a clicker. You can pick an Air Max scope up for between four and five hundred bucks. The bipod is the AccuTac BR4G2. And I don't believe they come any finer. I can't imagine anybody not totally loving the Catron's match trigger. It's dual stage, it's adjustable, and for me it exhibited flawless manners right out of the box. Its first stage take up is clean and light and it comes up against a well-defined resettable stop. And with just a little bit more force on that blade, crack, it snaps like a pane of glass. Eleven point five ounces. A hundred yards is probably too far to be pushing the two hundred and eighty millimeter barreled compact reliably, but part of the job is to push the limits of the equipment, find them, and relay that to you. Now, if you do want a long range of Catron, the standard long and extra long are going to be a better choice for you. Their longer barrels are going to achieve more velocity with less air used. And that's important because the less waste air you have emerging around the pellet as it leaves the barrel, the more stability that pellet will have over long distances. 
and the more resistant it'll be to the wind destabilizing it. The shorter barreled air guns just take more to get it done. And more than anything, that's what makes them better short range fighters. But the Catron here pulled off the 100, teaching me that 830 feet per second can be a good stable speed for the Diablo shaped pellet. And that waste air symptoms on a 13 and 14 grain don't necessarily apply to a 16. If your inner air gun nerd survived this long into the video, then you deserve to know. One of you's gonna win this gun, the actual Catron I used in the making of this video. Along with the Hawk Scope, Sportsmatch UK Rings, and Dani FL Moderator. As well as some goodies from JSB, H&N Sport, and Patchworm. The lower key mod pick rail I donated. We hold these giveaways most months and there'll be instructions on how to enter at the end of the vid. They're a simple lottery based giveaway and the odds of winning are very good. It's our way of thanking you and giving back to the airgun community. Well, that is all for today, guys. And special thanks to Utah Air Guns, Hawk Sport Optics, Sports Match Rings UK, AccuTac Bipods, Dania Fell Moderators, and Easy Fill for getting all of this and more into my hands to review for you. You guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now, from here, y'all want to head on over to the Air Gun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion threads and the giveaway on the Catron. I'll leave you links on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck everyone.